boisai. Shkoja. Shom Aleichem Chicago. Mazel tov, mazel tov to all the Messiahim. And bruchim abayim to all the maschilim here in Chicago and all around. There are over 700 people that are starting with Merkaz Dafiyami today, Mesech the Saita. So, big round of applause for anybody that started. Over 700 people. 700. It's a tremendous number. Tremendous. As I promised, Mesech the Saita is one of the most fascinating Mesech exciting, Gishmak Mesech Easy, very short. You're not going to be disappointed. Today is a little bit of an exception. <laughs> We're going to get some Agatha in there, but there's some technical Gemaras on Omid Bays. Do not let that turn you off. You're also going to face Pesach. We're starting on a Friday, Shabbos, going into a very tough week. And this is a week that could really get people. So I'm asking you, please stick with it. And if, you know, that one daf hits you, you can't do it Erev Pesach, you can't do it on Bilal HaSeder, it's understandable. And the trick is, as usual, you skip ahead and you catch up later. Skip ahead. Go with everybody else. One daf, don't let that one daf, the two daf bring you down. You'll make it up eventually. I also want to welcome here tonight, we have over 25 people that flew in from all over the place. I have to say, Chicago is a tough city. It is. It, only because there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of tzaddikim, mistarim, a lot of guys that do the daf, but they don't want anybody else to know. They won't even come to the see them, some of them. So I want to thank everybody for coming out, for not being such a nister tonight, coming tonight. It's a tremendous asylum. I don't know what we have. We, standing room only. So it's unbelievable. You know, especially Shukayach to Tani Pollock. Tani Pollock was a... We spoke a lot about him this year. He had a big loss. His young child, they went on a vacation, lost the, his, his young son. And Tani won one of the raffles that we're doing for the Arbi Psachim Initiative, the Chazara, he won the raffle, and he said, I'm taking that money, and I'm buying a ticket to come to Chicago, and here he is tonight. So, Tani, where are you, Tani? Stand up wherever you are. Tani in the back. Here he is, If you are new to MDY, this is your first time learning the Masechta, so we have an initiative. We have something to push you, to get you going. If you start and finish Mesech the Saita, you'll enter a $1,000 raffle. And the guy that brought you, I don't know what that has to do with anything. It's, it's like a, yeah, take it over there. Maybe. The guy that brought you is also going to be entered in another raffle. Another $1,000 raffle. So it's to encourage people that brought people in to, to stick to them and ask them how they're doing, encourage them to keep on going because it is going to turn out to be something that's going to change their lives and you want to be part of it and you want to encourage them to continue. No mic? We don't need a mic tonight. So I'll tell you, uh, I, I guess I could say this in the seum. But I'll say it now because people might be wondering, why am I wearing a shirt from the 80s? So I'll explain to you. Uh, I had a tremendous Ashgach of I was able to make my flight. And I believe I, I tied to the, to the island of the Tzibor because I was coming for Tyra, coming to give a shear. But my suitcases didn't make it. All my clothing, my suits, my ties, my hat, everything. It's all in France somewhere. <laughs> But I got to tell you, it's a tremendous Ashgachah Pratis because Yoshi, the artist, which we have to thank, he did a tremendous job in Masech Nazir. He worked tirelessly to create 
the Nazir book. It's over 100 pages, and it's a great way to do Chazar on the Masechta, and whoever did Masechta's Nazir, you just go through and say, oh, that's Masechta of Klaal Prata Klaal, that's the, I'm sorry, that's the Sugya of Klaal Prata that's the Sugya of Tful Yaim, Kipurim, all the beautiful Sugyas we learned. We worked many hours. I also worked a bunch of hours on it. And we gave it to the printer way in advance. The printer, the day that I'm leaving from Eretz Yisrael here, and I'm going to bring all the books with me, he calls me up and he says, sorry, the machine broke. The, this broke. Did that every excuse in the book? I said, but we gave it to you a week and a half ago. What do you mean? Oh, the, you know. So I was naturally, I was upset. But I said, you know, it turns out that had I brought these books, they would have been stuck in Paris. <laughs> and nobody would have had a book. Tremendous myself was Yoko brought this. Instead, the island printed it in New York, and Yossi Klein and Marcus Shkenazi, who are here tonight, they brought the book. Yeah, you have books? And Uncle Phil. Uncle Phil. Uncle Phil. So, Three suitcases. Three suitcases worth. So Yishkoyach for bringing the books. Beis HaShem, everybody's going to enjoy. And I guess... I guess we could start, why not? So, we're gonna, before we get into all the gadatas and all the stories and everything else that comes along with Mizab Saita, we're gonna have a few dav about the actual Saita. The actual Saita is very interesting that as the Gemara says tomorrow, that a person doesn't sin unless nichnas by ruach shtus. And this Saita is a Shaita. And in fact, if you look at the Rambam, in Hilcha Saita, he spells it Shaita. That's based, I guess, on the Torah. But a Saita is a Shaita. Because when you do a sin like that, you're doing a Shtos. What is a Saita? So, what we're talking about here is a husband who suspects his wife of sinning. And he warns her. And he says... I don't want you to talk and seclude yourself with so and so. Let's see. Hmm. Not good. Hope this doesn't happen during share, but okay. It's going really slow. I just want to, before I even start, I want to show you something that. I missed out last night, and I'll show you real quickly for today. This, we have Reb Yossi Klein, who started the Gemara Initiative. He's here with us tonight. Thousands of people are learning Torah because of him. And in the Sefnitz Nadarim, we asked permission from both of these individuals, and this is Avi Mandelbaum, who's just lifted the other day. 40-something-year-old, a very, very big part of our shir. So his mishpacha, and there's a lot of people here that are in, literally grieving over the loss. He's a very big part. He's our official Baltikea. He was on Zoom. He was the Baltikea of Zoom every day. Literally, he took the shay. Once he took that shayfer, he never let go of it. He was the. He had that mic. He was in. So Yoshi did this for Masechtas Nazir, and I just want to show you. These are the two main characters of Masechtas Nazir, the two Nazirim, and basically he had a goodbye thing for them. Oh, did you guys see what happened over here? If you Snooze, you lose. It happens in a second. Look what happens to the Nazir. Boom. Ding. On his head. Shalom Okay. And see you in Saita. All right. So here we are in Saita. These are the, the, the terminology goes as follows. When a husband tells his wife, I don't want you to seclude yourself with so-and-so, that's called kinu. And for that, our mission tells us you need two aid them. We're going to see there's other shitas in the Gemara. Then there's stira. Stira is when the, the wife doesn't listen. She goes ahead and she secludes herself. She's nistar. Machloikis, you need one aid, two aid them. What happens is she becomes usher to her husband, but she's just suspected of being over in Isser. We don't know for sure. It makes sense she was. He told her not to seclude herself and she did. So there's a way out of it. She could drink the Maim Amarim, the Meisaita, the special waters. Kain takes Shem Hashem, the Psukim, puts it in water, mixes it up, she drinks it. And the word Kinoi 
comes from the Pasuk, V'avar alav ruach kina. V'kine is ishtoy, there's a, it's a jealousy, there's anger, it's ruach kina. And finally, this is what happens. This We had a character, this is a mix of two characters. We had a character in Yevamas, the Burka lady, she was one of the women in Yevamas. And we also had this lady right here. This is Lachlukas from Nazir. And if she drinks, huh? From the Dharam? Okay, it's from the Dharam. It's all a big blur from the Dharam, says he's already 13 years old. This is what happens if she drinks the water and things don't go well. Fine. No, people ask me, since I interviewed a Nazar, will I interview an Azira, a uh, Saita? So this is the best I could do. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, boy. Okay. Let's see if I could get there, even. So the Shir, of course, is sponsored Lili Nishmas, my mother. Ruspas Mordechai. Let's see if I could get to the other sponsors here. Is this it? Oh, so real quickly, the coil is sponsored by Anonymous from Lakewood. The other is sponsored by the coil, Ruben Klein, in honor of my daughter, Elizabeth Komen Kal, Nedo from Toronto. We don't have a Masechta sponsor yet. So you guys are lucky. We'll move right by that quickly. The sponsor of the month, Lili Nishmas Chaim Elephant, Chaim Ben Yaakov Shmuel by his West Side friends, Lili Nishmas Chaim Ben Moshe, and the MDY family, Lili Nishmas Chaim Oren, a one-year-old that was just nifter. The parents of the week, Vladislav Zakharov and Schot, that I graduated this May. Parnas Hayoin, we have five of them. Vla, Vla, uh, Brian Intak. Brain? Brain Intak. Should be Zoycha the Nazi Dusha, tremendous success in all my endeavors. His tire is the Iker. Justin Ivry. We have Rav Menashe ben Moshe Aaron in honor of the Sima Masechta, Chazak ve Emat. Mir Bain in honor of the Bible Yoim and Mitzvah, Shmuel Yitzchak, Mordechai, Akayim Bain. Ah, it's a relative. He does the daf every day. All the way from Detroit, I believe. We'll see him on Pesach. Fourth sponsor, Lilin Shmas Rav Meir, Ben Rav Shmuel Scheinberg, Zechat Zadvi Kosh Levracha. And finally, Dave Sharfman, Lilin Shmas, Rav Menashe, Ben Moshe Aaron, to all the MDY members with the new Mesechta. I guess that's Avi Mandelbaum, Rav Menashe, Ben Moshe Aaron, Yibadal Chaim. The art for complete refuah for Chaim Tzvi, Ben Leah, and here we go. Hamikan Eli Ishtoy. A person warns his wife not to seclude herself. By the way, because we're so used to Nidarim and Nazar where the Dapim are very short, we have to learn how to pick up speed and you have to learn how to catch on quicker. Hamakana Lishtoy. Rebeliezer Oimer, Mikane La, Al Pishnaim. He has to use two Adim to warn her not to seclude herself. Umashka. And he gives her the water, the maim, hamarim, alpi, eid, echad, oi, alpi, atzma. He could do it even on his own account, and certainly if there's an aid. Rabbi Shua Imer, mikane la alpi shnayim, umashke alpi shnayim. Rabbi Shua argues, and he says that the stira, not only the kinu, he needs to aid him, but also the stira. Ketzad Mikano. How does it work? Ketzad Mikano. Oyim alav ifni shnayim al tadavri mishploini. Now the Mishnah says, how it doesn't work. How does it work? I'll tell you how it doesn't work. If he tells him, don't speak. He doesn't say, don't seclude yourself. Don't speak to so and so. Vidibro imoy adayin hi muteris. Adayin hi muteris, the beisa. She's muter. To have relations with her husband, umuteres lecho betruma, and if she's married to a kayan, she continue eating truma. Nichnasay me lebayis the beis haseiser. If she walked into that secluded place, v'shoa soy me kedei tuma. And so, by the way, just in case you're new to the shear, it's always kedai. I've done this a thousand times. I'll do it a thousand and one because everybody that's familiar with the shear is familiar with trumas and maestres and tuma. It's just something that everybody. Is not scared of anymore. Truma, if her husband is a Kayan and 
there's a Yisrael that has a bunch of produce, he must give to the kind 2% of everything that he has. And then after that, he gives 10% to the Levi. And from that 10% that the Levi has, the Levi has to take 10% of what he re- received and give that to the Kayin. That's Truma and Maiser. So, she must be in that house for whatever the Shir Tumah is, forever, however long the start of her relation takes. Now, this Negea, this Shir is Negea to, let's say, the, the Yichud room by Chasana. Also, it's Important to know the shear because sometimes one would go into an elevator in a New York skyscraper and it's a two, three minute ride up. Is that the shear yichud? And maybe it's also to be in an elevator with another person. Depends if it stops on every floor, it doesn't stop. Different halachas like that. Asura lebeisa vasura lechol betruma. So Rashi, Bar Hashem, we're finally back to Rashi. You, can't, you don't even understand how much I miss Rashi. From a mesepta full of ran, a mesepta full of toysvis. It was just very, very difficult. Here we are, finally. Welcome back, Rashi. And Rashi brings that this three psukim behinitma. And it comes to teach us that this, this woman who secluded herself, after her husband warned her not to seclude herself, but nobody saw exactly what happened there, but we can assume she becomes usher to her husband forever, unless she drinks the water. She becomes usher to the boil, to the guy that she secluded herself, and she becomes usher for truma because we have three psukim that teaches that. Bimais, and if her husband died, So going back to Yevamis real quickly, here you have two brothers, Reuven and Shimon. Reuven is married to Rachel, Yushami lady with a fish in her cart, the chicken hanging out of the bag, one of our characters from Yevamis. And if you were in Eretz Yisrael, you understand what the picture is. You see she has two phones in her tichel, like most good Yerushalmi ladies, they usually have one. This one has two. Great. Ruvain goes bye-bye. So this wife, since she didn't have any children with Ruvain, she falls Lehibam. Here goes. She falls. She goes down. She, she marries her brother-in-law. The one time that a woman is allowed to marry the brother-in-law, if they don't have kids, if not, if they don't get married, he doesn't perform Ibom, then the way out of it is to do Chalitza. She removes his shoe, she spits out his shoe, etc. This woman, since we don't know what happened here, and right now she's also to her husband, and then her husband had a heart attack from everything that happened and he died, so she does not marry the brother-in-law. The only way out of it is through Chalitza. Says the Gemara. Michti, and this is typical Gemara, we had it a number of times, the Gemara just wants to understand why in the world, why in the world is Mesechtis Nazir right after Mesechtis Nidarim? Where does Nazir belong? In Kachim. It doesn't belong over here. Says the Gemara, Why did Rebbe put Nazir right over here? Kid Rebbe. This goes according to Rebbe. The author of the Mishnah. Why is it in the Torah? The parsha of Nazir is right next to the parsha of Saita. Famous, famous Gemara. And this is one of the little treats that we have today. That gathered the treats. And we could learn a lesson for ourselves as well. When a person sees... The Saita, what she goes through. The husband schlepping her to the Beis HaMikdash, embarrassing her in front of everybody. He has to remove her hair covering, her shaitol, her tichel, whatever she's wearing, it's very embarrassing. And he rips her clothing, her shirt. And they have to tie the shirt back up with a string. It's a terrible bazaar. And he might even see her explode and everything else. A person witnesses that, he has to understand, where did it come from? What started it off? People act in certain ways, they drink too much, lightheaded, comes to Isser. So he should take upon himself something to correct it, that he shouldn't fall into the trap. And he should also refrain, not necessarily become a Nazar, because we said Nazar is probably maybe not such a great thing to become, but at least he should refrain from going to the bar and drinking and all that. The Chavetz Chaim... The very first time he saw a person be Mechal Shabbos, he started crying. 
started crying. Couldn't believe that a Yid would be Michal Shabbos. The second time he saw a Jew be Michal Shabbos, he cried even more. Rebbe, what's going on? Why are you crying more? He said, because the second time I saw the Yid be Michal Shabbos, I wasn't bothered as much as the first time. And for that, I'm crying. I can't believe I became slightly numb to it. And unfortunately, when we witness certain things, we witness Averis, we get these WhatsApps, these videos, we become a little bit number every time we see it. I keep on saying this, I said in Shir many times, that the American soldiers in the Korean War had a very hard time killing the enemy. But by the time it came to, to Vietnam, and they watched a lot of TV, they explained, a lot of, it became a lot easier. You see it in movies, you see this, then it becomes, oh, it's just killing, just shooting and just pulling a trigger. Same thing with Averis. We see an Avera, even though we're so far from it, but we say, you know what, oh, he did it. No. Another time, another time. So that's the Gemara is telling us, Yazir asked me AI. He has to take Fakert. The question is, why should that person refrain from wine? Everybody else should refrain from wine. He saw what happens. He saw the woman explode. So he's not going to have a problem. No, the opposite. The person that witnesses it is more in more danger than the person that didn't witness it. We said in Mishnah Nazir. You tell a Nazir, Lech Lech Amrila Nazira, Schar Schar Le Karmel Sikrav, right? You always tell the Nazir, don't go, don't even go through the vineyard because the first step of doing an Avera is getting close to it, is coming close, watching it, thinking about it, getting close. Once you get close, once it, then it might be too late. So the idea is to be Misrachik. Misrachik from wine, stay away from the Avera completely. Says Gemara, the listening side of all the listening Nazir. In the Torah, the parish of Sait is before, Naz- before Nadar, before Nazar. Sait comes before Nazar. So Mesech the Sait should, should come before Nazar. I did the Tonic Subas, Vitani Hamadar. Mesech the Subas has a parish called Hamadar, which talks about Nadar. So right after the Subas, we finish off Tonic Nadar and we have Mesech the Nadar. So first you have Subas that talks about Nadar, then you have Mesech the Nadar. But I did the Tonic Nadar and Tonic Nazar. And once I say Nidarim, I have Mesech Nidarim, I talk about Nazir. Why? The Dhamma Nidarim, because Nazir is similar to Nidarim. As we said when we're learning the Nazir, it's a very similar idea. Tani Saita, Kedarebi. And once I said Nazir, now we talk about Saita because they're connected. Nazir and Saita are connected. Yazir asked me, Yai. Hamikanei, it says in the mission, the first words, Hamikanei Lishlein. Taisa explains that the, right afterwards it says, Rebbe Lezo, I'm in So it's like a double Lashon, says Taisa. From the words I'm a kind of, I could learn, the evidin It's only if the guy wants to tell his wife not to seclude herself, great. He shouldn't really go ahead and do it. It's not a good idea. Imagine this woman, the anger that she has against her husband. He's just embarrassed in front of everybody. He's accusing her of all these things. It brings machlaikis between a husband and a wife. Don't do it. Don't be mekana. Don't, don't tell your wife that she shouldn't seclude herself with somebody. If you're sure, you're sure. But don't, don't start accusing people. That's one man daughter. So that's why the mission uses Allah of hamekana. If he did it, after the fact, this is the halach. But you shouldn't do it. When Rish Lakish was learning Mesech the Saita or the Parish of Saita, Amar if a person complains that his wife is a witch, he should look in the mirror or look in the closet. He has a broom in the closet. He's a witch. Because Akash Baruch Hu doesn't give a person a shidduch unless he deserves it. This woman who's a prutza, you know why she's a prutza? Because you're a parat. Akash Baruch Hu gave you what you deserve. Again, every shidduch in this world is based on the individual. Because Rav takes two not good nicks and puts them together. Two tzaddikim puts them together. So don't complain. Shenemar kilo yenuach shevet haresha. The the rod of rishos is not going to rest. Al goyer la tzaddikim. You don't find a tzaddik that gets married to a rasha. It's not like that. 
the famous, famous Gemara, that we hear it at every single Shevet Brachas, B'koshen l'zavgon k'kriyos yamsu. To make a Shidduch is as hard for HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kaviyachal as Kriyos Yamsuf. Meaning, Kriyos Yamsuf goes against nature. There's actually dozens of Pshatim here. I don't even know where to start. Maybe I won't say any. Kriyos Yamsuf is against nature. I'm, I'm just rashing. So, whatever it took HaKadosh Baruch Hu to stop nature, and have Klai go through, that's how hard it is for him to make a Shidduch. So, like I said, there's a Medrash in Parash Vayetze. Medrash says that this Matrinisa came to Rabbi Yaisi and said, what is HaKadosh Baruch Hu doing since he created the world? What is he busy with? He's busy with making Shidduchim, says Rabbi Yaisi. So she says, Shidduchim, big deal, I can also make Shidduchim. She took a thousand slaves and a thousand shvachas, and she said, you with you, they, she lined them up, exactly, they lined up and she sent them home. The next day, says the Medrash, they came back, this one had a broken arm, this one had a broken head, this one was missing an eye. She said, okay, I give up. It's, it's really hard. But if you think about it, when Klai Yisrael came up to the water, the last, last thing on their mind, they said, Hashem better help us. What's he going to do? Maybe all the Mitzvah will drop dead. Maybe a boat will arrive. But the last, last thing that they thought in their minds is that the water is going to split. Never occurred to them. Many times when we have Shiduchim, it comes from left field. You have no idea that you just happen to be here and somebody saw you and, da -da -da and read the shit or whatever it is. It always comes in the, in the most interesting ways, in the far-fetched ways, like Kriya Siamsu. But perhaps the Pshad is, I think a lot of people relate to this, is that to make the Shidduch not so gefella. We see people, it's easy maybe, once you meet somebody, it goes well, you get engaged, but to keep that marriage going for 25, 30 years, oh, that's Kriyas Yamsov. To keep that water standing straight against nature, to take men are from Mars, women are from Venus, and to put them together in the same house, and had that last. Why are you, why are you smiling, Rugdalia? You're relating to this, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Shkaya from coming, coming all the way from New York. Shkaya. Um, another thing. Is okay. We'll we'll see in a second. I have a question about what the Gemara has to say, but let's see this. Um, there is a Taisa Shans here. I, I don't want to forget to say it, so let's just see it inside right now. Taisa Shans is that small little print all the way on the side. I believe I typed it out for everybody. If I could get in here. Hmm. So, oh. if you want, you just look on the screen. I'll read it for you. I think this is a very wild Teisher Shans. That's why I'm, I'm reading it here. Unbelievable Teisher Shans. The reason why it's on the Kriyas Yamsov. Listen to this. Just like a Kodesh Baruch, you hear what's going on here? What's going on? Just like HaKadosh Baruch Hu killed the Mitzrim in order to save the, the, the Jews, listen what he does. When a person gets married for the second time, says the Teish Shan, you know, what, you know what happened there? It's hard to understand. But I'm telling you, it's a wild thing. I like to tell you wild Pshatim. You have a person, HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants this guy to marry this woman. The problem is they're both married to different people. Accident over here, a machlo over here, gets rid of the, these two, and then he puts these two together. That's Kriyas Yamsov, says the Teshan. Teshan says it. You're saying, as I the Rishon. The Bezivik Sheni Kamairik in the Mefarish Besamach. As the Gemara is going to explain now, we're talking about the second marriage. Says the Gemara, now we're going to see inside. I told you, Skishmak, 
Now, on the basis of a different story, don't blame me for anything. We'll go real quick. You know, we'll know that it happened. And then invite the Gigangin. Shenemar Eloikim Moishiv Yechidim Beiso. Beiso. HaKosh Baruch takes singles. Singles. People are not married. And makes them into a home. He marries them off. Moitzi Asirim Bakoisharois. And he takes out the people. And Rabbi Yisrael, you're not going to believe it. This is talking about Pesach. Pesach night. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Atat, mamish, any day, in Yara de Yoyma. Kishbor, who took out Klai Yisrael from Mitzrayim at the perfect time, because Sharais, that's one shot. Eini, asked the Gemara, how could it be? Bo'omer, Rav, Yudomer, Rav. Rav says, Arboim, Yom Kroyim, Yitzir, Savlad, 40 days before the baby is formed. What does that mean? What day is that? The day of conception, because it takes 40 days. To have a tzura, meaning, they, it's a nicer way, I guess, to say it. 40 days before Yitzir Savlad, Bas Kol Yoytzes Vayimeres, Bas Ployni Leployni, Bay. So place it says on the spot, just so you should know, maybe not all of you knew this. Which Vlad? The girl or the boy? What if they're not, what if one of them isn't born? So says is talking about the boy only. Before the boy is born, or as he's conceived, Akash Baruch says, you are going to marry a girl that's not even alive yet. Wasn't even conceived yet. That's what Taisa says. Ba'is Ploini Leploini, that house with the basketball court in the basement, that was already designated to you before you were born. Saw the Ploini Leploini and your Parnasa, everything is quite in serious of life. So what are you telling me that has to do with you being a Russia? That if you're a Russia, you married a Russia. If you're a Tzaddik, you married a Tzaddik. Hashem already decided way before you're born who you're going to marry. Now, says the Gemara, like Cassio. Oh, by the way, I said this joke 300 times already, but I have to say it now. It's joke 137. I'm going to say it real quickly for all those that want Chazar on it. I know Uncle Phil likes when he has his jokes, I'm saying it for him. There was a man who divorced his wife. And as they left the Besden, he turns to her and, she, and he says, let's get married. He got married. So they asked him, what are you doing? And he said, you know what? For the second marriage, she's perfect. <laughs> oh, all these guys didn't hear it. Yeah, but it's the Mephur Shigemara. Like Asia. Ha, Bezug Rishon. Ha, Bezug Shani. The first marriage is mazel. The second marriage, oh, that's kasha kikriyas yamsuf. So frekzach the kasha. So how come in every shemer brachas they say kasha lezivu and shalali kikriyas yamsuf? It's the first second marriage, not for the first marriage. You're in the wrong shemer brachas. It doesn't work. The Gemara says kasha zivu and shal adam kikriyas yamsuf is only on the second marriage. It doesn't apply to the first marriage. No, what's the pshat? You could say, I don't know if this is the real pshat. You could say that Rizal says that we're all here for the second time. Our first marriage is back then. We are Zivik Cheney, so to speak. We're all Gulgulim. Okay, different, different pshat. Everybody says their own pshat. But there's a fascinating Rashi, and all the Rishonim talk about this Rashi, and it's a very, very famous question. We're not going to have any answers tonight, but we at least could bring up the question. Three lines from where Rashi becomes thick. Why? Vim Taimar. What do you mean? Our boy, I'm going to be serious of Lad, Basco, Yazid, and Marriage, but I'm going to be is asking, how did Hashem know if that guy's going to become a tzaddik or a rasha? What do you mean? Hashem knows everything. Hashem knows the future. There is no future by Hashem. Everything is here. It's that this. What is it called? It's uh, it's relative, whatever, space. The, there, Hashem knows the future. So, he said, because he's going to be a Russian, she's going to be a Mershaz. They're both witches. They go together. And they're both Sadiq. And they go together. What's the, I don't understand the question, says Rashi. Says Rashi, Hashem doesn't have power, so to speak, over the Yerushalayim that a person has. A person has Pchira. He could decide to be a Russia or not. 
He brings the, the the zera in front of. He says tipe zoom at the aleo. Hashem decides gibar rechol chacha my tipeish asher ayani. Hashem decides everything. Avot tzadik for Russia loy kamer le says Rashi. Hashem doesn't decide there's going to be a Russia and a tzadik. Then he says b'dei Ask all the rishonim and the famous Rambam. But at the end of the day, yes, it's not in Hashem's hand, so to speak. But Hashem knows what He chose. So if He knows what He chose, He should make a shidduch based on the judge. And the Rambam says, a pshat. And the Ravid says, if you say pshatim like that, don't ask the question. And there's a whole fight between the Rishonim. Ayin Chum, if you're an Apikoris, this is a beautiful Rashi for you. You can take it to the bank. Zagli Gemar. Loi Kashi. Ho b'zug Rishon, ho b'zug Shonim. Let's all remember kind of law of Pishnai. Atkan, like Omar, Atkan, like the yellow bikini steer. Our machlegs in the Mishnah is on the steer part, not in the bikini part. The first step, when a husband tells his wife, don't seclude yourself with so and so, we need to aid him. But when she secludes, she secludes herself, do you need to aid him or one aid that we have machlegs in the Mishnah? But what if they witnessed, somebody witnessed her actually? Doing an Avera, but Tuma, Eidachamem, one is enough to say that she's completely us to the husband. Rabbi Isai, what happens if there's an aid or Aiden that saw that she became Tomei, she was Mizana? What happens? Does the Mayim Ma'arim work for her? No. Mayim Ma'arim is only when there's a Suffolk Saita, not a Vade Saita. I have to get divorced immediately. Says official from official catering, also flowing, your scars are official. There is no drinking if one witness saw it. Anyways, the Gemara says, coming, it comes to Tumah, one aid is enough. How do I know this idea in the Torah that one aid is believed? The Torah Rabbanon, the aid, Eimba. So the Gemara says something fascinating that nobody knew, and if he came just for this, it was Kedai. When the Torah says the word aid, Eid means how many? Two. Eid means how many? Whoever said one is wrong. I also said one. Eid means two. Eid means two. That's it. That's the whole you today. When it says Eid, it means two. So when the Torah says, the Eid Eimba, she doesn't, there's no two witnesses, there's no two witnesses that witness that she was Metama, but there is one. How do you know that the Torah is referring that there's not two, but there's one? Maybe it means there's not one, but none. So here's the Pasuk. He doesn't know about Avnistra. She secluded herself in Nitma and she was a Mizana. Says the Gemara, the word ve'ed over here means two. Now, this is very important to remember this possible. And the Gemara is going to go three times to explain why we need this possible, why we just said this is Russia. You see the double ash in here? One aid is not enough. No, it could have also said one is not enough. But it says, Layakum Eid Echad Bish, the double Lashen. And from that, the Gemara says, returning to Abbas and Bays, that's not for I live in Lisa Simcha Shaino Masha, and Lisa Simcha Shaino Masha Bad Bracha. Last night, with Makachir, the members of the HBA group and their families are made. <laughs> you could all go to sleep now. I'm just going to go through this technical sugya, and I'll wake you up when I'm done. Mimash Mishanema Layakum Eid Ish Bish, Eidin Dashu Echad. So now the Gemara explains. Why is there a double lashon? This is a binyan after the whole term. Anytime it says the word eight, it doesn't mean like we think one, it means two. Over here, it teaches us this idea. Eid, echad. It has to be one eight. But if I just say eight by itself, it means two. In this passage, it means one because it says echad. So by Saita, it says there aren't two that's here because it says the eight einba. Two people didn't witness it. How many did witness it? Elochad, one witnesses. Vilan is pasa, and she wasn't forced because she wasn't forced. And there's one aid. Asura, one aid could say that she's also to her husband forever. So ask the Gemara, why do I need this pasuk on the screen? 
If without this pasuk, I would have said that when the Torah says aid, it means literally like we thought, singular one one aid. So it says, and there isn't one aid. If there isn't one aid, then what, what's wrong? Nothing happened. How could you make somebody usher if there isn't even one aid? Says the Gemara. Um. Mark, I need you desperately, quickly. Mark Ashkenazi, the famous Mark Ashkenazi, the biggest Baal Chesed in NDY. Right in here. Here, give it to me, I'll do it. Give me this, okay? Okay. Um, how can you make her also if there's not even one aid? What happened? Says Gemara Yitzchak. Yitzchak means this pasuk right over here. Okay, we're going to keep going back to this pasuk. Why do I need the drush? What does that mean, aid eimba? There's no aid. A nemamba. Not that there isn't one, but he's not believed. A nemamba. What do you mean he's not believed? Bill, my boy. What do you need? I think a tray. You need two. Lishli kromine. Then why do I need a pasuk? Why do I need a pasuk to tell me that that the one aid is not believed? Check this out. The famous, this is Xeris Shava. It says over here the word Dover. It says by two Adim, regular two Adim, Apishne Adim Yakum Dover. Dover Dover, Mimamim. I know you're done. I call it Duyush about Torah. Every Adus in the Torah, we know you need at least two for, for testimony. So by sight also. So why does the Torah have to tell us the whole Pasuk? Obviously. It says, let's go back. I need this Pasuk. So that I mean a site shani. Why they're a glaim ledover? You know what? Everything leads up to the fact that she was mizana first. He he warned her not to seclude herself. Then she secluded herself. Okay, and finally the third step that somebody saw it. One person. That's enough. Maybe that's the shari kina love in Israel. Maybe one is enough. As the gemara mitzvah samers the ein nemam ba v'shario. So what are you telling me? Ve'i dein ba. Only there's not two Aiden, but only one aid. And she's she's muttered to her husband, but the Torah says, but she wasn't forced. So think about it. She wasn't forced means that she's she's usher, not that she's mutter. The Torah is saying she's usher. She wasn't forced. What does that mean? She wasn't forced. She wasn't forced, and therefore she's also to her husband. So how can you tell me that she's mutter? Says going back to this passage. I'm telling you, it's going to get better and easier in Gishmaker. Don't fall out now in that base. It's every Mesech the same story. I would think that you need to. So, Kamashmalan is that aid means two. And by Saita, you don't have two. Eight Aimba, right? It says eight Aimba. Eight means two, and you don't have two, you only have one. So she's also to her husband forever. If it wasn't bainus. That's what the Pasik is saying. If it wasn't bainus, and there's only one aid, then that's the Khidish of the Tyra. One aid can make her usher forever. Okay, new sugya. Rabbi Shua, I remember la Pishnayim. Says Rabbi Shua, you need two aid in my time Rabbi Shua Makra Ba. Ve'ed ein ba. Let's see if we have the pasuk here. Yes. Binet ba ve'ed ein ba. It should just say ve'ed ein. What's ba? In her. So the, the Gemara understands there's three things going on here. We have tuma, the actual act. Somebody witnessed it. That's ba. Then we have kinoi and stira. He warned her not to seclude. The seclusion. Ba v'lebi kinoi. Ba v'lebi stira. In other words, the tuma we said is enough to have one aid. But for the kinoi, you need two. For the stira, you need two. And that's the sheet of Rabbi Shua. Only ba, only in the tuma. Part three, you don't need two aid them. But part one and two, you need two aid them. I take that drosha, but I only use it for one out of the two things, for kinoi, not for stira. Who told Rabbi Le- 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 which one to, to use the ba for? 
There's two things. We have Kinu and Stira. Maybe Kinu needs two. Maybe Stira needs two. How do you know which one to use it for? Stira is Keshul Tuma. No, you can't use it for Stira because Stira is, is, what's Stira? She secluded herself. So it's very close to actually doing the sin. Oh, for that, you don't need two Adam. That is like Tuma. Tuma only needs one. The Sivan is Ravi Nitma. Because it's very close. We have it in the Pasuk. Nistra Nitma. Says Gemara, Kinu Nami, Tuma. If you're going to use a Pasuk, I have another Pasuk to tell me that Kinu is also like that. The Siv, Vikinu Sishta, Vinitma. It says Kinu. And Tuma. Just like Tuma only one, Kinu also one. Why are you telling me Ba comes to say that the Kinu needs two? But at the end of the day, what am I going to do? I have a word Ba. So what should I do? The Torah says that one out of the two only needs, one out of two needs two Adam. So we're back to square one. But how, how do you know which one of the two? Says the Gemara, Mr. Abastira Adifa, it makes more sense that when she's over and she secludes herself, after she was warned not to, she came, Isarta Batuma. Because that makes her usher through the act. Says the Gemara, that's the beginning. The whole thing started because he warned her. So maybe that warning needs to. Without her doing an Avera, without secluding herself, who cares if he warned her? And if he warned her, who cares if she didn't seclude herself? The bottom line is, which one is better? Which one should we use the drasha for? It's where the, the Avera starts, and that requires two. Says the Gemara, Masnisin like Aitana. Our Mishnah doesn't go like this. Tana that says the Sanya Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yehuda Omer Mishum Rabbi Yezer. Who's in our Mishnah, Rabbi Yezer? We have another Mandal that says in the name of Rabbi Yezer the exact opposite of whatever our Mishnah says in the name of Rabbi Yezer. Hamakana lishto imikana al piyeh dechad. In our Mishnah we said Rabbi Yezer holds that Kinu needs two. Over here he says Kinu only needs one. Oy al piyatzmoi. Or he can warn his wife directly. He doesn't even need a aid. But stira, you need two. The exact opposite of what he said in the Mishnah. Our Mishnah says stira is one, <coughs> kinu is two, and over here saying kinu is one, stira is two. Yeshiva Chacham, I apologize, ran out of time. I could have had charts to make the sugi a little bit more interesting. Ne- next time. Yeshiva Chacham, let's see if we have more charts here. No, that's it. Yeshiva Chacham, let's see if we have more charts here. The Gemara is going to explain what that means. Basically, if a husband is permitted to, to warn his wife on his own, so if he wants to mess around with his wife, if he wants to mess up her life, he could just say, I warned her. Nobody will know if he did or did. Yeah? My time in the Rebbe's review, though. Omar Kro, Bob, Bob of Stereo. This we saw before. He's, he's using the same drusha that we had before. The word Bob, whoever's talking over there, please quiet down. It's very disturbing. Bob. Again, same shadow we had before. How do you know this word ba comes to exclude stira? Maybe it comes to exclude kinui. Kinui comes to tuma. Same thing that we had before. The sivikin is shtevin itma. Stira now is shtevin tuma. The sivikin is shtevin itma. Says Gemara, no. Now we're saying something that we didn't say before. Ahu lekamo shir stira kde tuma yuda asa. The the pasuk is coming to say. How much time does she is? You have to seclude herself, and then we'll have a different Gemara, exactly how long that is, but that there is a shear. Don't say that she secluded herself for 10 seconds. No. It has to be the shear of Tumah to do an act. What does that mean? My new. Says the Gemara. If a person has the right to, sec- to warn his wife without any aidim, then anytime he's upset at his wife, I'll say, I warned you, and I'll take her to the Beis be- Amigdash, and I'll have to do all the, the, the entire procedure, which is very embarrassing, and that's not right. Says the Gemara, Halim Shasenu Yesh Ludov Asayif, Zinin Delayta Istater, Va'amar Istater. What's the difference? In our, in the, our Mishnah, the, the Brazil says, to do Kino, you need one. To do Stiri, you need two. Okay, so the, the Gemara says, to do Kino, one and himself, or himself, so he can mess with her. Our Mishnah also, he can mess with her. He, he'll bring to aid them that, Warner, don't seclude yourself with her. But he's believed, according to our Mishnah, on his own, that she did seclude herself. So now he can really mess with her. He goes, goes to the best and says, listen, I saw that she secluded herself and we have to trust him. You're right. 
Not only in the Mishnah could he mess with her, and Eilat Dov there's no end to it, but even in the Brisa. The Gemara says that that doesn't make sense. The Lashon. Why? After the Rebbe Yisrael Yehuda, I know it's very quick, and it's very quick, it's very technical, it's going to get easier. Adi Rabbe, the Mishnah Seinu Ike Iker, Hasem Leke Iker. What makes more sense, Rebbe Yisrael, think about it. When a person hires two Adim to warn his wife not to seclude herself, and then she, seclude her, she, she secludes herself, and we trust him. Does that make more sense? Do we trust him more than in the other case, where he didn't hire anybody, and he comes to Bezin and said, I warned her not to seclude herself with somebody. There's no start. There's no, in that case, how should we trust him? In the case where there was, she has a history, he already hired to aid them, now we should be able to trust him. Oh, so if that makes more sense, why does the Gemara say, af? Even in the case where it doesn't make sense, it should be the exact opposite. Even in our, you have what I'm saying? Okay, says the Gemara, I don't know what you're saying, our Mishnah, there's a, a history. Hasam like it. Eli itmar, achi itmar. You're right. Our Rabbi Yisrael, 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 the Brisa is the one. But even our Mishnah, Eli Dov Yisrael, even in our Mishnah where there is a history, still, we should be concerned that the husband could mess with his wife, even though there's a history, he could still, if he wants to be mean, he could bring her to Bezin, even though she never secluded herself with anyone. Check out this Tysus, very, very interesting Tysus. And this happens to be the very, very final halacha in Ebenezer. I just thought it's an interesting halacha. Listen to this. It's like seven, eight lines from the bottom of the last Tysus. When a person does kinu to his wife and he warns her not to seclude herself, he shouldn't do it out of leitzanos. It sounds like an MBD song, no? You should have fear, you should do it. Listen to this. It's crazy. What if a guy is in a great mood? He just had a drink. And he says, oh, by the way, I don't want you to seclude with so-and-so. It doesn't work, says Taisus. If a person is besimcha, kalis roish, the kinui won't work. And that's how the Evan Ezer finishes off. This is the final Allah from the Evan Ezer. Fine. Says the Gemara. Omer Amchani Na Mesura. Loi leima inish litzei bizman hazeh litistri badi plaini. Listen to this Allah. It's unbelievable. Think about it. Maise Shaya. If a person tells his wife, even in a joke, you know, the plumber is coming today. I don't think you should uh, keep the door closed. Be careful, yichud. Yeah, it happens a lot. Careful, Yichud. The guy's coming. He's man, you're not allowed. Allah says you shouldn't be in Keep the door slightly open. You know what that is? That's Kinui. And if the plumber comes into the house and they close the door, she becomes also to her husband. There's no way out of it, says the Gemara. It, it could happen. Bizman Azir. Loyleima inish litse bizman Azir. Loytistri badi ploini. After the Bismillah was destroyed, so we don't have Mayim Amamar and we don't, we don't know what to do. There's no way to figure it out. Since we could possibly, that Allah could be like Rabbi Yehuda, like Rabbi Yaisi, that a person on his own, he doesn't need anything, he can tell us he warned his wife. And she secluded herself after he warned her. He told her about the Allah and she forgot and she closed the door. And we don't have the, the Mayim anymore. because There's no way out of it. So, Tachlis, the bottom line is, if a person says to his wife, at least we learn one Allah today, if a person says to his wife, be careful, yichud, don't close the door. I've heard people saying it. So you have to say, no, I'm, I'm a vatal, what I just said. You have to, you have to be a vatal, because maybe the, it's Allah, Allah, Maisa. Amish Lakish, Ma Aloshin Kinui. Where does this come from? The Torah says, Vikina. Kina is a Loshin of jealousy, of anger, of, of fighting. Says Rishlokish, this has to do with a fight between her and her friends in the world, not between her and her husband. 
Why? That a husband could warn his wife. And nobody knows. It's between him and, his, and, and the wife. All of a sudden, you notice that this woman is not socializing with anybody. She doesn't go to weddings. She doesn't go to the Fiyomi. She doesn't go to the Shiru. Nothing. Zero. And people are going to fight with her. They're going to be very insulted that she doesn't attend Simcha. She doesn't hang out on Shabbat. Nothing. Why? Because she's scared. Her husband warned her. He might have said, don't, don't, don't seclude yourself with any guy. And she should go to some place and by mistake she should be awesome forever. No, the fight is between husband and wife. And this, I think everybody knows this, but it might be Kedai to, to repeat. The Avera of Sinas Chinam and hurting another person, does it apply to one's wife and children or not? Huh? Who said that? Yes. Who says no over here? Anybody? Nobody? Ah, okay. Good. Yeah. The Isser of fighting with one's wife is the same exact Isser as fighting with somebody else in the street. Same thing with your own children. You say, ah, oh, Chinuch, this, that. But a fight is a fight. So, says the Gemara, you might cause a fight between a husband and wife. So, Rav Shlemya, in the name of Abayah, must hold that the Kinoi is something that everybody knows about. And everybody knows that he performed the Kinoi and he warned his wife. And he is going to fight with her. So, this is the, the Shita that holds, since it creates like is between a husband and wife, you shouldn't do kinui. If you know something's certain, great. But if you don't know, don't start warning your wife about stuff. And if you say that you're permitted to, and we're going to see tomorrow, permitted, are you mechuyiv? Not mechuyiv, but you're permitted. So where does it come from? This lotion of anger, fighting. It doesn't mean a fight. It means to warn. It's a lesson of warning. Rabbi Sai, have a wonderful day. Rabbi Sai, we just finished Sota Daf Bays, and MDY is excited to introduce Kahoot to the Daily Shear. Kahoot is a fun, interactive way to test your knowledge on the Daf. For those of you who have already participated in the MDY Chazara program, you know how this works. Every day we'll be posting four multiple choice questions on the DAF. If you paid attention to the shear, you will be able to answer these questions correctly. It's a fun and exciting way to concretize your learning. Here's how it works. Take your phone and scan the QR code you see on the screen. You will be directed to the Kahoot website and be prompted to enter an email address and a username. Now this link is gonna change daily. So in order to get the Kahoot questions for the daily shear, Go to mdychazara.com and register. We will be posting the daily Kahoot link there. In the coming days, Rav Eli will be announcing incentives associated with Kahoot. So don't miss out. Stay tuned. And Rav Bosai, it's Kishmak to do the Daf. <laughs>